Hey folks, welcome to a Broken Meeple review and this is Geometric Art from Empress 4 Games. Looking a little bit different from their usual fare though, because most of their fare you find is in the little box kind of like uh, you know, Walking in Province, which I've already done a review for, but you, know, or you get a couple of their big boxes as well. But to find a perfectly square box for them is kind of unusual. This definitely is a very different kind of game to what they've normally brought out, although much in the same way that a lot of their games do, it's a interesting quirky game. You know, definitely a bit more unique than others. With Geometric Art, it's a roll and draw game. You know, we've got roll and write and flip and write, now we've got roll and draw. Except this one's more of a kind of party-esque style game. It's You can play it co-op or competitive, and I know sometimes that's a red flag, like, oh god, yeah, you know, design it one way. But this is a very simple party game, really. The idea is, is that you have a bunch of dice with shapes like a circle, a square, a triangle, a line, curvy line, a pink splodge, or whatever. And what you generally are doing is that you'll have a card that will give you a theme. So it could be food, it could be movies, it could be flowers, whatever. And the idea is, is that you, you roll the dice, you're only allowed to use a certain amount of them in the round based on a card flip, and what happens is that you have these dry erase boards where you have to draw an item to do with that theme that you think other players will get, but you're doing it with only the shapes that are on the dice you're using, hence geometric art. You get a cool dry erase board in order to do it, you've got pens in the box, you effectively draw it in secret, write the title down, and then eventually you'll reveal it to other players and people try to guess what it is. The title will be on a little flip down bit there, which is a little annoying at times because you kind of have to think, well hang on, how do I show this to people and then flip it and you know, it's, it gets a little bit fiddly but you can work around it. Um, other than that, you know, the, the components in the box are pretty standard. I mean, you've got a few little cards. You've got some nice, like, almost kind of like rustic looking dice, you know, with the shapes on it. You know, they're pretty sweet. The dry erase boards, you get uh, one, two, three, four, five of them in the box. And you get some dry erase pens. Other than that, there's not a huge amount in the box per se. I mean, this is a, probably the best size for it. But it's not like there's a ton in here. Now, in terms of design of said components, it's a little bit hit and miss. I like the dry erase pens, I like the dice and the cards, they're fine. These boards though are a bit hit and miss. Firstly, you know, where you're supposed to kind of reveal it, you know, you're, you're supposed to keep it secret, but then flip it around and then sort of reveal it to players while holding the title bar. It's kind of weird how you're supposed to do that in the game. But the other thing I'm not a fan of is the space it gives you to actually do the drawing. You've got a row at the top here, which is where you put ticks and crosses based on whether opponents or colleagues, depending on which mode you're playing, you know, uh, guess the title of your thing correctly, or whether you know they guess it wrong, or nobody gets it right, or if you copy the item that someone else has done. That I quite like. I like the idea that a bit like the uh, Just One game, which I got down there, you know, that party game, the one that won the Spiel the Yaris this year, with that one, if you put the same clue as someone else down, then it got scrapped. Here, you actually have a chance of being eliminated from the game if you do that too often as well. Because here, you're not really going for points. If you're in a co-op mode, you're essentially trying to guess a certain amount of titles correct as a team before you lose too many dice. Nice and straightforward. As a competitive one, you're trying to have the most ticks effectively from correct guesses or people being able to guess your one and not get eliminated from the game, which basically means that you end up with so many crosses that they just cut out straight kill you. Uh, well, not kill you, we're only artists. <laughs> You're a little bit nicer than that, you just get kicked out of the gallery. But going back to the whole component thing, look at this board. Now, you might get a better picture on the left here and that, but look at that board, do you see a problem already? This is the rectangle that you're supposed to draw your shape in. Compared to the rest of this board, that's a pretty small rectangle you're supposed to draw things in. And it's made even worse because you've got these four idiots that are in front of the thing and their heads and torsos are sticking up into where you're supposed to draw. So you've got a very small like, space to use fairly thick felt pe you know, dry erase pens to draw in. It's an irritating prospect. Why you know, do we need this like wasted space around here? You know, Just have the track and then have the whole thing is just one Basic board, do it like Telestrations. Telestrations managed it with a flip chart, just do something similar to that. But I found myself constantly having to squeeze like a little thing, like, oh, I've got to put it in and now I've got to rub it off, oh, for crying out loud. Oh yeah, and the rubbing off, hmm. 
Where's the rubbers? Telestration's done it and I'm sure other ones have done. If you're gonna give me a dry erase board, you better put some of those, uh, you know, what do they call it, the little cloth things that you can rub the thing off. There ain't any in the backs. So thank God we were able to find something suitable otherwise. But yeah, be careful. They don't come in the box. You're gonna need something before you open this to wipe those boards off. And bear in mind, you can only wipe it off with so many things because you don't want it to smudge over time. You want it to still be like pristine white when you do it. But come on, would it have killed you, Empress 4, to put some cloth wipes in the box? Telestrations did it, why can't you? And that's like a cheap party game. You know, this is essentially a cheap party game as well. So with that aside, you know, component niggles aside, and they are kind of niggles, you know, is the game fun to play? Hmm, yes and no. It's better as a competitive game, I feel. The com the co sorry, the cooperative game is not only extremely hard to do, you're supposed to get five titles correct before you run out of dice, and every time you get across you end up losing the die. Well, there's only seven die there, so it doesn't take you long before you end up having very little to draw with. And, you know, and one person comes up the title, and multiple people can guess it, but again, if people guess differently, then that could be across it. It doesn't work as well, I think, in cooperative mode. But that's a small niggle. Mainly, I would play this competitive. And with competitive mode, it's a bit better. You know, because you're trying, you know, you've got the theme, you're trying to draw something that you don't think anyone else has drawn, but you also want people to be able to guess yours correctly. And of course, when people flip theirs, it's basically a, like a race to put your hand up and say, uh, cabbage, you know, and hopefully get it right. But of course, you jump in too fast, you get across for getting it wrong. So it stops people just instantly blurting out the first thing that comes to their head. And it causes a bit of like, you know, like mind shutdowns at times because you'll think, you look at it and you know it's blatantly a carrot, but you don't want, to, something in your mind stops you from blurting it out. And then somebody else says carrot, and it's like, oh, for crying out loud, it's so obvious. Why didn't I say it? You know, it's very much a kind of chicken aspect of like, oh, do I want to blurt it out? No, I don't know. And like in Telestrations, you can get some weird and wonderful drawings, although, not quite to the same level as that. You know, that one you're deliberately trying to make stupid drawings. Here you're actually trying to make your drawings semi-realistic. like But of course, the fact that you're doing it with triangles, square, quadrilateral circles and all that lot does make it kind of amusing. You know, when you're drawing animals in geometric shapes, it's like, hmm, okay. So I've got a circle for the cat's head, a square, square rectangular body. Um, I've got a couple of lines. Oh, well, it's got two legs, not four. And I've got one triangle. Okay, it's only got one ear. Yeah, your cat's gonna look a bit weird when you're using these geometric shapes, and that's the appeal of this game. We're getting nowhere. Death. I'm lacking death. Come on. Does it work in all settings? No. I think this is kind of more akin to not just new gamers. I mean, it's certainly new gamer friendly, even if the rules are a little bit ambiguous at times. You know, it's kind of. I almost feel like the rules contradict themselves once in a while. You know, I feel like the translation wasn't quite on par here. But once I sort of got it down and had a look at some FAQs just to reiterate it, it wasn't too bad. But I don't think this one's going to be a gamer-centric game, you know, even like a party game for gamers. I think this is more akin to families. So it's kind of a gateway-approved game, I would say. But the problem is the rules might confuse a few people, so you might want someone at your game cafe to teach it. But I think families will enjoy it more. Because this definitely, I think, will appeal to kids, you know, or younger players who, like, you know, enjoy drawing in general, but also like the amusing idea of drawing with dodgy shapes. You know, mum and dad can play this as well, and it, there's not much you have to understand. You just have to be creative with your drawing mind, and that's easy enough to do. There's no complex rules in here. There's no fiddly scoring or anything. It's just straight up, did you get it right or wrong? Tick or cross? Have you got so many ticks? Right, you're out. Let's see who got the most ticks wins. Nice and easy. So... It's certainly, I think, more for that clientele. This is definitely not, kind of not one of my favorite games I've played from Emperor S4. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's still good. It's still solid, but compared to a lot of their other titles, I think this is one of their more weaker ones, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, they've, they've yet to put out a bad game for me. You know, but this one's probably further down the line in my enjoyment of it. You know, occasionally I might want to pull it out, but, you know, the fiddliness of the small, like, square that you've got to do it, you know, actually draw it in, the lightness of the game, you know, some of the ambiguities of certain rules, you know, it does get in the way, but I think it's not really for me in terms of the market. 
I could probably give this to my friend with two kids and they would probably have a blast with it. I could see their kids, you know, who are uh, kind of like, I think one's eight, one's 12. I, I could see them having a blast with this. You know, they would do pretty well. I think the kids would love it and they could just have a laugh and just say it's a lighthearted game. And of course you do have co-op and competitive mode to play. Granted, I think competitive's by far, by far the best one, but occasionally you just might want to play the co-op mode. At least it gives you two options, and it's not like one's broken and the other one isn't. You know, I just think I prefer a competitive. Components are fine. The dry erase pen should last you a little while, and then all you've got to do is buy some more, maybe with some thinner nibs, so that you can actually draw on more of these. But then if the worst comes to the worst, you could always just grab yourself some basic dry erase pads and replace these if need be, although getting it in the box might be uh, difficult at that point, so maybe not the best idea. But as I say, it's a novel idea. I like the concept. I feel that the execution isn't quite as good as it could have been. But I still, I think for families, this is one that's worth checking out. But it's probably not going to be one that I'll likely get to the table again on a personal level. So, but this one, I give it probably about a six overall for myself. You know, it's it's fine. It's okay. I just don't think it's breaking any boundaries. I think there's, you know, one or two niggles with the graphic design that get in the way. But if I play it, I'll still enjoy it. It's just what, not one that I'm likely to seek out anytime soon. So that's it for me with Geometric Art. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. And until then, regardless of whether you've drawn me with a triangle head, a square head, or a circle head, it's still only a game. Take care, and I'll see you next time.